All right, let's see what's going on here. Now we're going to look at uh, contingency tables. I made little two-by-two two tables to talk about independence and association. Uh, things that are uh, independent of each other when knowing one doesn't change the likelihood of the other occurring. And if they're you know not independent, that means that they must be associated. There must be some association there. We're going to look at both cases here. Got my trusty calculator here so I can find relative frequencies. But let's look at the table quick. Over here I've got gender, male, female, and music preference, whether they like hip hop or country. And over here I've got gender, male, female, whether they play video games or they want to be on Facebook. So I might just go in there right now and just quickly look at it and say, oh, look at that. Obviously, when you look at it, uh, you know, women uh, like hip hop more than men do. And obviously, women also like uh, video games more than men. But you can't look at it that way because you can't just say, oh, women like video games more than men because there's more women who like video games. Well, there's more women overall. More women also like Facebook than men. More women also like country than men. So women like hip-hop more than men and country more than men and video games more than men and Facebook more than men? No, you can't do that. You have to put it into relative frequencies. So we're going to, we're going to relate it to the whole of all women. We're going to, we're going to find what's called the, remember what it, it was, the marginal and inside conditional. We're going to go down. We're going to find the conditional distributions. Okay? So let's do that right now. Here we go. Um, we're, going to be, we're going to look at the distribution of uh, music preference for males first. But I need to find totals. 50 and 5 is 20. Uh, 45, this is 60. Okay? Let's see over here, 35 and 15, 30, it looks like there's 50 here, so it looks like there's 100 females. So there's more females in both samples, okay? So remember these are both, uh, look at both, these are both categorical, categorical variables, categorical. If we were going to display these, we use a pie chart or a segmented bar or side-by-side -side bar or side-by-side -side pie charts. Uh, um, so let's look at their relative frequencies. So I'm going to make another box down here that's going to have their relative fr frequencies, hip-hop and country. So let's take a look at their relative. 15 out of 20 males, 15 divided by 20 equals 0.75, which is 75%. 5 out of 20, the rest over we know is 1 quarter, 5 divided by 20. That means 25% prefer country. So look how the men are distributed. I'm, 15% like hip-hop, I mean, sorry, 75% like hip-hop and 25% like country. Interesting. Let's look at the females now. 45 out of 60, 45 divided by 60, points up. Look at that, 75%, which means 25% must be here because these all add up to 100%. I hope to put 100 bucks. Percent, 100%. So, here's the question. If I put... There are some males and females in this in this in this survey I gave. So suppose I put them all in a hat. Okay, well I wouldn't put imagine if I actually had a hat big enough to put them in and I shook it off. If I put their names in a hat and all the names and I shook it up and I pulled the name out and I said, How likely is it um, that this person prefers hip hop over country? And you could tell me it doesn't depend on whether it's male or female, does it? Because either way. About 75% of men like hip-hop and about 75% of girls, females, like hip-hop. So it doesn't depend. So it doesn't depend. What does that mean? Doesn't depend. Independent. Independent. There's no association between gender and hip-hop. There's no association. So it's... Independent. We say there's no association between gender and music preference. So think of something that there might be association. Uh, if I take a random student's name from your high school and I say, what's the likelihood that they um, have a car? You'd say, well, it depends on whether they're a freshman, sophomore, and jun uh, junior or senior. Okay, because I'm sure seniors are more likely to have cars than freshmen. So there are two things that are uh, associated. There's an association. If you're an upperclassman, you're more likely to have a car than a lower classman. So there's an association. So things are not independent because it does depend on whether you're a freshman or like a senior or something. So let's look at another one over here. All right, look at this. Females are more likely to like video games. Oh, no. Oops. I just looked at the count. These are counts. Let's turn to relative. Let's make relative percents. So here we go. Uh, we have video games versus Facebook. Let's check it out. Video games versus Facebook. Um, all right, 40 out of the 100, 40% of the females 
uh, 60 out of 100, that'd be 60%. 35 out of the 50 males, I better get my calculator out for that. 35 divided by 50, 70%. 70% leaving 30% here. Aha, woohoo! 70% of the males play, would prefer video games, while only 40% of the females would prefer video games. So good thing we didn't just look at the counts. Because we have to realize, until we get them into conditionals, we really can't compare them. Yes, there were more females that preferred video games, but we asked 100 females. We only asked, uh, uh, you know, males. So we need to make it relative to the total amount. So notice, 40% of females like video games, and 70%. So it seems like men tend to play more video games. And I know that's true. I mean, I a lot of buddies that play video games. And even in high school, you see a lot of the guys play video games. Um, I'm sure the girls would prefer Facebook. Um, so if I, if I put all the guys and girls who were in this survey, their names in a hat, and I shook it up, and I picked their name out, and I was like, here's their name. And I say, how likely is it that this person prefers video games? You would think, well, that depends on whether or not it's a male or a female. Because it depends, it's, is it independent? No, if, because it depends, it's like dependent, which means it's not, I mean, not independent. Okay, You can't say it's independent if it depends, because independent means not dependent. Does that make sense? So we just found out it depends. So it's not independent. Not independent means there's an association or a relationship between gender. There's a relationship here. It seems that males are more likely to play video games. There's an association. There's something going on here. So, when there's nothing going on, okay, we say there's no association or it's independent. When you see some kind of thing going on here, oh, mm, men seem more likely to play video games. The women seem more likely to play with Facebook. There's some association or relationship there. One way that some students like, you know, if you if you want to think of it just like a way to kind of like remember, some people actually do this. They're like, all right, um, if you look at them and they're kind of the same percents, then they're independent. But I want you to think about it. The reason why they're independent is it doesn't really depend on which one you're taking it out of. So think about this. Um, if there's no differences here, they're independent. Um, and if there's differences, if they're not the same, if they're not kind of the same, they're not independent. So when they're the same, they are independent. When they're not the same going down, they're not independent. Because there's an association here, something going on. So hopefully that kind of clears up. Just remember, independence means no association. They're both saying the same thing. And not independent means that there is an association. Later on, you're going to be doing something called a chi-squared test for independence. Well, some books actually call it the chi-squared test for association. And they're, they're, you know, they're, they're both kind of testing for the same thing-ish. Okay? Um, so we'll get to that way at the end of the course. But right now, here it is. Don't just walk into a contingency table and look at the number and say, well, that must be true. Turn them into relative frequencies. Go down and, and, and go down the rows or go across this way and, and, and make conditionals. Okay? Peace. Talk to you later. Bye.